Joined now by the former executive producer of Hockey Night in Canada, the co-host of the Bob McCowan podcast. He is in beautiful Radium, British Columbia, Blake, mere 281 kilometers from Penticton, and yet he is not coming to see us at Young Stars. How dare you, John Shannon? Not good planning, Addy. That's all it is. It's just not good planning. I, no, you know, I know. This, uh, this, my golf uh, trip was uh, a, a year in the planning, and uh, <laughs> for some reason, you know what? I'm one of those guys, one, if, if I come to the Columbia Valley, I'm not sure I want to go over the Rogers Pass. <laughs> the other bridge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think our listeners, it's though, are friend. beginning to pick up that John Shannon leads, uh, leads a very difficult life. Yeah, um, absolutely. For the amount of times that we've seen you on the golf course uh, doing these hits, and we appreciate you making time. Um, Blake, he goes drinking with Gibby and Lloyd Minster. Yeah. He goes to the BC Hockey Hall of Fame and Penticton Gala. You're not drumming up a lot of sympathy here, John. <laughs> Somebody has to do these arduous tasks. I want to ask you, well, we'll be in Penticton and, of course, the Young Stars, uh, well, today, um, checking out everything from the yep. uh, Canucks, Oilers, Jets. And, John, we were remarking that in the early years of this tournament, the Edmonton Oilers were really the drawing card because, of course, they had all those number one overall Mm -hmm. Draft picks, I can remember the late, great Pat Quinn sitting down holding court as coach of the Oilers, as you may remember, at the first Young Stars tournament. Now, when you look at it, yeah, Edmonton is sending some prospects, but and of course, Winnipeg always has good prospects, but now it's a whole lot more about the home province team. And I think well, that it, should help. Yeah, and, and, and well, it's funny because, you know, there'll be a lot of people from Alberta both Flames and Oilers fans that will make the trip probably left last night to arrive for for the the Friday games, um, and and yes, uh, it'll still be, but uh, it'll still be driven by Oilers fans because there are a ton of Oilers fans in the Okanagan yeah. too. That's not to uh, say that there aren't Canuck fans, um, but you know what we're seeing now is um, all four teams because because some teams took it ser more serious than others. Um, at, at one point, but all four teams now know the importance of the draft, know the importance of, of building through their prospects. And I think we're going to see a really competitive tournament. I think we're going to see some fun, fun things. I Listen, the names of people that when we've all been there that have made an impact, not just there, but in the NHL, I, you know, that was the first time I met Bo Horvat out of a London night sweater when Connor played the first game for the Oilers there. Johnny Goodrow spent the whole week. Nick Ehlers was there. This is a really, really fun weekend mm -hmm. if you're a hockey nerd. you know, And it's no different for what's happening in Traverse City, Michigan, uh, where the Red Wings host a tournament uh, with the Rangers, uh, with Dallas, and with the Maple Leafs. Buffalo's got a tournament that the Senators are part of. This has really become in many ways, uh, the inaugural four or five days to the start of training camp, start with your prospects, and then get on with the big time team next week. Yeah. How much do you want to see out of them? Do you expect a big time? Pro like, you know, you're talking about guys that actually did. Like I remember when Connor McDavid got onto fifth gear, the crowd oohed at the South Okanagan Event Center. Even Nick Ehlers turned on the Jets, same yeah. sort of thing. You you understood. But it, it can be hard. They're thrown together. Do you, Do you think organizations look at this? and evaluate the performances in a, in a setting like this? It's a tool. I'm just saying, how big a tool? Well, I, I think it's a much more important tool, bigger tool for teams, uh, probably um, it, with, with players in the second, third, and fourth rounds, the prospects that they aren't predicting to be, you know, bona fide stars. You, you know, I mean, let's, Blake, Connor played one game. Yeah. But the vicious body check, I think it was... Uh, it was Vertanen. It was Vertanen. Jake Vertanen, that's right, mm. and didn't play another game. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't any point in having him go through that. You know, the, you know. for instance, there are uh, there are teams that have decided not to send players uh, to uh, to prospects. I know that the Devils are not sending um, Luke uh, to the uh, to the the series in Buffalo, mm. uh, Luke Hughes, uh, just because. What's the point? But I do mm -hmm. think that it's those for those second round, third round, fourth round picks that still have to prove themselves, not to the scouts, but to, to management guys and how you exist within that different dressing room. I, I think it's still very important.
Mm. Uh, just before we leave the Young Stars tournament, although not necessarily about their younger stars, more about their older stars, uh, we heard Noah Hannafin say in Calgary this week what he's open to signing a long-term deal. As we talked about often over the course of the summer, John, waiting for shoes to drop in Winnipeg, Calgary, with some of the bigger names who have been rumored in trades, and would would they sign long-term extensions? And we'll get on to Elias and his long-term extension here in a moment. But have you picked up anything recently on the Flames and Jets as they no, I, make their the way other, to training camp? I think the other message uh, yesterday in Calgary was the Elias Lindholm stuff that's saying we're going to play the year out. We're just going to take our time and play the year out. Um, you know, these guys are still under contract for the year. Uh, I, I think this is, uh, this is a wait and see scenario. Is life better after Daryl? How much better is it after Daryl? Um, how much, how, how much can Craig Conroy, who is a persuasive, effusive guy, how much can he, uh, put his imprint on some of these guys that they want to keep long-term? So I, the good news is, like Hannafin, I'm, I'm not sure about Lindholm, but they are keeping an open mind. As far as Winnipeg goes, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm still not convinced that that one of these one of these key guys will even start the season. I'm not sure which. I think Hellebuck's there for the start of the season. I'm still not sure, um, you know, about Mark Shifley. Yeah, uh, and 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 that's I think that's the question, and I I do think that. We still haven't seen um, a lot of discussion this week about salary cap issues for teams that are over, and I still think we're going to hear and see those, and I think that's going to be a factor. Is Calgary a bigger um, year than Vancouver even to make the playoffs and the permutations of missing the playoffs if it, if it doesn't happen and trying to keep players in the fold. I mean, it's Elias Pettersson here, but it's, it's more guys there. Do you think they face pressure more, more so than even Vancouver? No, I, I, but I, but I, I think that they're on such different trajectories, Blake. I think the Canucks are a team that's on the rise. And I think, uh, what John Bean and Craig Conroy are trying to do in Calgary is try to stop the decline. Right. Uh, and, and I, I th- so I, I think there's a crossroads there and, and you, you know, I think in the end, we're going to see a lot of fight between those two teams, maybe even for that number three position in the Pacific. Uh, and if the Canucks can keep their defense together and, you know, broken record, that's your Dimco. Without an A on his mask, boys. Without an A on his mask. Okay. Oh, Julie noted. We'll oh, catch you come for on. an O. Come on. All come right. Well, let's that have a, that out. You, that you, you, July, what's your July, objection? That was a what's, July 27th topic that you had to fill. You know, that's what that was filler, you guys. Come on. We all know <laughs> the goaltenders can't wear letters. It was but, September 12th, Mr. Shannon. I'll have you been, know. He says it deserved to be in July at this point. July 27th. That's right, Blake. Anyway, yeah, that's it. But I, I think that, you know, that if Demko can do his job, the defense that they've rebuilt there can do theirs. You know, I think the Canucks can really put a scare into the flames and, and, and that might change a lot of attitudes in Calgary. What about Patterson, John? His agent said, Pat Brisson said yesterday that he wants to wait until the end of the year. What do you think is the motivation here behind the Patterson camp wanting to wait this one out? Not to be a broken record. But it's two years away, boys. Oh, it's yes. two years away. Two years of, of possession, but two years if they of want possession. To... Yeah, two years yes. of possession. Yeah. Come on. Let's enjoy the one year first. Let's enjoy this year. Uh, Let's get him to the next level. That's can we I, I I listen, I know, but where's the cap a year from now? I think there's enough questions with the growth of the team, with where the money's going to come from with who's going to get re-signed of the other guys, with who's not going to be in the club. I think that both sides can take their time for this year, but I'm really I'm really the advocate of, hey, guys, I mean, I can understand one year out when you can sign a long-term deal, like you know, what Nylander's facing, but what they solved the problem with Austin Matthews in Toronto, but we're two years out for Pedersen. Please, mm-hmm. can we just enjoy one year of, Pedersen playing the game without him. So you're unflapped by all of this. It is, totally. There's nothing there. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Totally. Okay. This is 
This is smoke and mirrors, and this is don't fall into Pat's game. I love Pat. Pat's brilliant. Don't fall into the game. All right, we'll make a quota for Shannon. <laughs> one hit per month on Pedersen. <laughs> um, well, like, one question per month. Hey, John, it's <laughs> not like not that I've ever tried to produce everything before in my life, man. That's yeah, true. See, that's true. See? see, see, he's producing the show from afar. Yeah. Therein <laughs> lie the pitfalls of having a former executive producer, no less, Blake. He's drinking a beer on the, on the deck in radio, programming our show. Oh, hey, yeah. hey, just for you guys, black coffee. Oh, very nice. Right, right. We right. get the sober one. That's good. There we yeah. go. Um, hey, it's not like they were particularly prompt on this announcement last year, albeit they had an expiring radio deal. So I think it was a little more understandable that it took until the last minute or close to. But um, what are you hearing on Canucks broadcast rollout? We haven't heard that from the club yet. When do you think that's going to take place? That's a great question. Uh, um and and by the way, I think we're hearing and seeing um, the rollout slow across the country, both with. Yeah, I haven't seen anything for other teams too. You're right. No, yeah. no, yeah. and and um, in the Vancouver scenario, you do have to wonder. Uh, we all we all know that Dave Tomlinson's coming back, which is great for Dave. I'm thrilled for him. He's I think he's a great broadcaster. I think he'll do a good job. Um, but what role does he have? TV and radio. Um, you know, the other who fills in on, you know, the other 20 games, it's rumored to be Ray Ferraro, but Ray Ferraro has other obligations. And so we haven't, we've seen the, finally seen the ESPN schedule, but there, there are there other uh, permutations that Ray can't be seen outside the province because he still has an obligation to uh, TSN. I, I wonder if those kind of things are, are factors in waiting. Yeah. I also think, I also think that in, in, you know, everybody hears about crunch time and money issues. Uh, how many exhibition games, or what do they call them now, preseason games? How many games before the regular season starts are we going to see teams do? Because I don't think we're going to see, I, I don't know about the Canucks, but I, I do know about a couple other teams. We're not, we're not going to see every game televised by TSN or by Sportsnet yeah. in the preseason. Yeah. So you wonder where that fits in. And I think they're trying to do a single blast rather than We were We were blasts. spitballing on that, John, and we thought, hey, the all-Canadian matchups serve two markets. We can see them do, making sure that those games hit the TV. But if you're playing an American team in the preseason, maybe they don't bother. Like right. in Seattle. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, and, I mean, now, will those games be available somehow? I bet you the clubs put them on their websites with the scoreboard feeds, which mm -hmm. is – you know, for a preseason game might be good enough. The other but it's, thing a, is, it's a bit 2007, though, to do that. You know, like it's well, I thought we yeah. were past that. Yeah, but we all know what the telcos are going through money wise. Yep. Uh, and, and, and we have to at a certain point, if you're a shareholder, you have to respect that. Um, and and, and the, the other aspect of it is, is I just I just wonder if if what the baseball team in our country the influence of the baseball team is if if the if the Blue Jays are playing well and the numbers reflect. Now it's not that case this week, but do you want to compete against yourself naturally mm. against yourselves, mm. or does TSM want to compete against the Jays mm. when they're red hot and playing a lot? They're they're drawing one five, one six, one seven. The numbers when the Jays are winning are spectacular, mm. um, and so that's I I wonder if that's a factor too. It sounds to me like. Mr. Shannon has some BC Can we see RCI in, in his portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to respond to that, John. Um, uh, just I, to, I, listen, I would, uh, I would, what? I would show it to you, but it's on my phone, or I don't want to share any. Right. Phone, so. Yeah. Exactly. Um, just one thing: if uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, ESPN has a stake in TSN. So if Ray is working for ESPN down south, then his ability to work for the competitor up here in Canada, of course, would be uh, gated via the ESPN deal. But John, you were also telling me that Rogers has like an option of taking, is it 12 different Canucks games national? And you don't think that's been quite worked out yet either to know which games I, I, are national, which games I, are regional? All the teams that Rogers controls regionally. So that's Toronto for a small package. That's Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, they have the ability to extend 12 regional games to the national level. 
So that's why last year you saw a lot of Thursday nights in out of Edmonton in British Columbia. You saw it because it was, and it was the regular regional guys, Jack and Louie and, and Gene doing a show that was seen coast to coast. Wasn't, wasn't either Wednesday night hockey or Monday night hockey or hockey night in Canada, but it was the regional package. Uh, they have that right to do it because they own the national deal and the regional deals. I'm not sure those deals have been working out. I think that that's what the schedule maker and the, and the uh, programmers at the networks are still working out at this point. Mm -hmm. I would like your two cents on what transpired this week on spitting chicklets with Paul Bissonette. Um, not what? necessarily who you believe, uh, whether it's Babcock and Jenner or, 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 or the report itself, but that, Bissonette followed up as sort of crudely as he did with that tweet about we're a player spot and we're going to stick up for players as well as serving on the TNT national panel, John, put your executive producer hat back on for me, uh, my friend, and tell me how you would be managing this situation. Well, I would have been on the phone and I would have told him to delete the tweet. Uh, and if he said he was big, too big to delete the tweet, then I would have another conversation with him. Here, here's the thing that I, I'm concerned about. I, Paul now has become, and I like Paul. Paul's been on our show. He's fun. He, he's got a good grasp of being an entertainer. Um, but being on Spit and Chicklets is different than being on TNT. When you're on TNT, you are a face of the league. You are a face of the game. You know, I have, if I had a 10 year old son, 11 year old son, and we were watching a TNT game, you know darn well that my son's going to be, you know, going on X and finding Paul Bissonnette's timeline. I don't want my 11 year old son reading that stuff. I, I don't, I, and I, you know, I don't want some adults reading it either. I think that they, they find it crude and lewd. Uh, I think he has to be concerned with that kind of stuff. I think he has to watch that kind of stuff. Uh, I hope for Paul's sake, um, and I would say this to Paul, if, I, if he worked for me or if I worked alongside him, I'd be happy to do it. Um, but I hope he learns from this because he has a lot of influence. And the other chap. He can, be, he can be better for the game without doing that kind of stuff. The other chapter that dovetails out of the story is what does CBJ do going forward? Because um, even if we fully accept the CBJ statement, there's clearly people in that room that leaked the yeah. story that, that weren't as f fabulous with, with the exercise and everything is going to be analyzed. Uh, this was, this is part of the problem is that whether or not he's turned over a, a new leaf, let's even accept he's turned over a new leaf. There's still going to be perceived toxicity. That's probably going to dog this team. How do they just operate as a normal team going forward? Mike Bob Babcock has to be perfect. Like, <laughs> but even he then, they're going to he perceive to something that is unintended. And, is and like, you know what? They better not go two and nine. They better go nine and two. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. That's absolutely right. Uh, yeah. When I first saw that yesterday or first heard the report, I went, boy, this could be a really long year for yeah. Babs and Columbus. And then I got myself and went, or maybe it's a very short year if they regret their decision on head coach. Enjoy the golf. Enjoy radium. Magnificent to have you back in your native BC. Thank you for this, Mr. Shannon. We'll catch up next week. Good to be home, boys.